Hello, you are welcome to Basic Mechanics. Our topic for today is equilibrium. My name is Brian Frimpong and I'm your host. Lesson outline. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to understand equilibrium in terms of all the equilibrium conditions. You should be able to draw free body diagrams in two dimensions and in three dimensions. And finally, you should be able to calculate for the unknown forces. According to Newton's first law of motion, if the system of forces acting on a body has zero resultant, the body will remain at rest or move in a straight line with constant velocity. This explains that a body is said to be in equilibrium if it remains at rest, if originally at rest, or has a constant velocity if originally in motion. So the body is originally at rest and it remains at rest or it is in motion and it maintains a constant velocity. In other words, we can say in equilibrium, the resultant force and the resultant moment acting on the body are zero. So the body will show no tendency to rotate and it will remain at rest. That is static equilibrium or move in a straight line with constant velocity. All this satisfies Newton's first law which requires the resultant force acting on a particle to be equal to zero. We can represent this condition mathematically as total forces on the x-axis are zero, total forces on the y-axis are zero, and total moment is equal to zero. These requirements are both necessary and sufficient conditions for equilibrium. You have to take note of that. All physical bodies are three dimensions. All bodies in this are three dimensions. But we can treat many of them as two dimensions when the forces to which they are subjected act in a single plane or can be projected onto a single plane. In situations where this is not possible to project onto a single plane or it acts on a single plane, then you have to treat this as three dimensional. When solving equilibrium problems, these are the three main steps you have to follow. First, you draw a free body diagram for the problem. Then, you obtain equations of equilibrium for the problem. And finally, you solve the equations and interpret your results. There's this normal student saying that understanding of the question is part of the answer. So first of all, you make sure you read the question at least twice for you to understand the question well. You draw your free body diagram, you obtain your equations, and finally you solve the equations. Now let's take the three main steps one after the other. So first of all, let's look at the free body diagram. A free body diagram in physics and engineering can also be called force diagram. It can be represented with the initials FBD, which simply means free body diagram. It is a graphical illustration used to visualize the applied forces, moments, and resulting reactions on a body in a given condition. So the underlying word here is a given condition. So your free body diagram should correspond with the given conditions in the question. The body in question may consist of multiple internal members. So the free body diagram should depict a body or connected bodies with the applied forces and moments and reactions which acts on the body. Please note that in some complex problems, you need several or series of free bodies and other diagrams to be able to solve such problems. To construct a free body diagram which will correspond with the conditions on the body, first of all, you sketch the outline shape of the body. That is, decide which body is under consideration and imagine it to be isolated from all other bodies. Step 2. You show all the forces acting on the body. Indicate by means of arrow all the external forces and couples that act on the body. This should include number 1. The weight of the body. Number 2. All external applied loads. Number three, reaction at supports from which the body was detached. And finally, forces due to contact with other bodies from which the body was isolated. 
Step three, identify each force. The forces that are known should be labeled with proper magnitudes and directions. Letters are used to represent the magnitudes and directions of forces that are unknown. That is how to construct a free body diagram. Let's move on to look at some examples of free body diagrams. With this diagram, a block of a known mass is resting on the inclined plane. The mass of the block is M and the block is exerting the weight. So weight is equal to mass times gravity. That is what we have over there. The inclined plane is also responding to the weight which is being exerted by the block. So the reaction is the normal reaction we have N over there. And the inclined plane, there's a force, a um, frictional force opposing the motion of the block on the inclined plane. That is F. Let's look at the next example of a free body diagram. Over here, a body of mass 15 kg has a force labeled P acting on it at an angle of 30 degrees. At point B, the body is being represented with the dots and the body is exerting the weight onto the surface and the weight is W. So weight is equal to mass times gravity. Mass is known and gravity is also known. Therefore, you multiply the mass by the gravity to get the weight. The force acting on the body P is being shown there at an angle of 30 degrees. At point C, we resolve the force P to the X axis and also to the Y axis at an angle of 30 degrees. Draw free body diagram of the foot lever shown below. The operator applies a force of 20 pounds so that the spring is stretched 1.5 meters. So take a look at the diagram and the solution. That is the end of section 1 of equilibrium. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for section 2. Drop all your questions at the comment section. Thank you.